This is the final public hearing for the fiscal year 2021 annual action plan. Um, so I'm gonna give you an overview of what that means and uh, kind of a timeline and an overview of the four different federal programs that the city receives funding to conduct. Um, so again, I'm, I'm Whitney Finstrom with the Office of Management and Budget, Community Development Division, and I'm gonna be presenting today. Here's my email address, whitney.finstrom at pittsburghpa.gov. If you have any uh, follow-up questions that you have, please do email me. I'll have some additional contact information towards the end of the presentation. So again, I wanted to welcome you and I, this is the final public hearing for the fiscal year 2021 HUD funding. It's made up of four funding programs that the city receives as an entitlement community. So in other words, the city of Pittsburgh receives funds due to its composition, population, poverty rate, um, and so on, that um, allows the funds to be received by the city to conduct economic development and housing and social services um, using these funds. The 2021 year for the city of Pittsburgh is April 1st, 2021 through March 31st, 2022. So in a sense that fiscal year has already started and I'll get into uh, what that means a little bit later on. But I mentioned, I wanna give you some background. The city of Pittsburgh receives four entitlement grants, right? So the biggest one that the city receives is under the Community Development Block Grant Program or better known as CDBG. Um, the city receives roughly $14 million for that program. And the next three programs are the Emergency Solutions Grant Program, which is geared towards homelessness and uh, near homelessness. The Home Investment Partnerships Program or HOME is for affordable housing. And the Housing Opportunities for Persons with AIDS Program or HOPWA, this better known as focused on persons with AIDS. And this is an annual allocation received from the US Department of Housing and Urban Development. So, it comes from the Congress. Congress first makes a determination as to what the allocation will be for HUD overall. And then HUD in turn allocates those funds to the CDBG, ESG, HOME and HOPA programs. And then the city receives its allocation annually. So it varies according to the level of the federal budget, what Congress has decided and the president in terms of the bill that's signed to approve the funding and then it comes eventually to the city. And the timeline for that varies considerably. It's never a consistent uh, time frame. same time frame every, every year. <laughs> Depends on how quickly or slowly Congress um, and the president and the departments are working on allocating the funds. So just to give you a big picture, for the four federal programs that I mentioned, for 2021, again, which is April 1st, 2021 to March 31st, 2022, um, the CDBG funds that the city will receive is in the neighborhood of $14 million, 14055. Uh, so you can see in the upper gray bars, that's the amount that the city will, receive, will, will be receiving in 2021. Uh, home funds in the amount of 2.3 million, emergency solution grants in the amount of 1.2 million, and then HOPA, roughly about the same, 1.2. So this is actually a slight decline from last year, um, a slight increase for HOPA, but anyway, within, the, within a region, reasonable range. So what does this all mean? Well, so at the beginning last year, we went through an extensive five-year planning process and we completed what's called a five-year consolidated plan that's required. And that's uh, setting kind of a, the framework for the next five years. So that was completed last year. And the annual first year annual action plan was part of that consolidated plan. Every year within that five years, you have to do an annual action plan. So this one is actually the second year for the plan, action plan. There will be a third, fourth, and fifth, and then we'll start the process all over again with another five-year consolidated plan. So we have a framework that's the consolidated plan that was completed last year. And uh, within that five-year period, we're following along the, the uh, 
guideposts that were set, and we'll go through some of those later on. Um, projects in the actual and the action plan can be divided into roughly three categories, as you, as you can see: um, projects subgranted to organizations, projects delivered by the city, and administration expenses for oversight oversight of the program. This kind of provides an overview in terms of the process. This is focused on the consolidated plan, but the annual action plan is also very much a part of this. Uh, engagements with the community, the residents of the city is a key part. And um, so, it, but initially the five-year plan helps to sort of determine the overall needs. It's much more extensive than the annual action plan. It has a, a housing market analysis that dives into data related to the current housing market and the needs, rental affordability, and so on. Um, that sets the priorities and then determines resources and sets the goals. And then the annual action plan follows along this process as well, not as involved, but um, it follows along the patterns that were set with the consolidated plan. Just to give you an overview, I don't want to go too heavily into all this, but um, so there are guidelines set by the federal government and by HUD in terms of the use of these funds. So for the Community Development Block Grant Program, uh, the intent of the program is to maintain decent housing, to provide residents with a suitable living environment, and to expand economic opportunities. Those are the three key objectives of the CDBG program. And within that, the, each activity that's funded has to meet three national objectives. Um, it has to benefit low and moderate income persons, right? That's the key part there. That's the most common category. Um, it needs to, one of the others is to prevent or eliminate blight so that a demolition program could fall under that or meet an urgent need. Usually that's used for a natural disaster such as a hurricane or um, tornado or the COVID-19 crisis, that category was used for emergency assistance to food banks. So there are fairly, it's fairly wide latitude in terms of the use of CDBG funds, as you can see um, within some specific guidelines, but um, you can acquire property and relocate and demolish, demolish properties, rehab properties, construct facilities, you can assist with public services. There's a 15% limit to that. Um, you, energy conservation efforts are also included and economic development and job creation and retention are another uh, with a key component. There are ineligible uses of CDBG funds too, again, set by the federal government and HUD. You cannot use the funds for government buildings, political activities, you can't provide certain income payments, or construct new housing. Again, this is just for CDBG funds. You can rehab housing, CDBG funds, but you cannot construct new housing. The second program is the Home Investment Partnerships Program, or HOME. And as you can see, this is restricted for to construction or rehab of housing for low to moderate income persons, or for down payment assistance for qualified first-time home, buyer, home buyers. And it can be used for both owner-occupied as well as renter-occupied housing. And there are income guidelines for this for the home program uh, as well. Um, and that's to provide safe and decent housing for low mod income persons. That's really the key. And we've kind of gone over those components. The Emergency Solutions Grant Program is, as I mentioned, is strictly limited to serving homeless or those who are in jeopardy of homelessness. Um, it's authorized in the late 80s. Um, there's a formula grant that's used to award the city of Pittsburgh funds for this program. Um, and there have been some modifications through the 2011 Hearth Act, which uh, modified the eligibility for the program. Just to give you a quick overview in terms of a couple of the type, types of activities, there's a program called Rapid Rehousing, which provides tenant-based rental assistance, or better known as TBRA in our acronym world. Um, there's also street outreach efforts that are a major part of the funding. That includes uh, engagement with 
folks out in the streets who need assistance, case management, health services, uh, mental health services, transportation, and services to special populations as well. So those are the key components. And finally, the HAPA program is, uh, is by nature of the, the term, is for persons with AIDS assistance. And um, this program provides short-term rental assistance, mortgage and utility assistance, long-term tenant-based rental assistance, or TBRA, um, permanent housing facilities, and services. Could be health services or counseling. So stepping back to the five-year plan, these were the high priority needs that were identified for the five years. 2020 through 2024. Um, and these kind of provide the framework for the subsequent years for the, each of the annual action plans. And we'll go through those because these are the priorities that were set during the development of the five-year plan and inform the annual action plan. So the housing strategy, there's a need to improve the quality of the housing stock in the city. And that can be done through increasing the supply of decent, safe and sound accessible housing for homeowners, renters, and home buyers. And then in addition to that, there's a homeless strategy to assist persons who are homeless or at risk of becoming homeless. The other high priorities included um, assisting persons with special needs. That includes um, elderly, frail persons with disabilities, persons with HIV AIDS, victims of domestic violence, persons with substance abuse issues or other special needs, um, community development strategy, we need to improve the public and community facilities. This could be parks, public rec recreation facilities, infrastructure, public social welfare services, food programs, public safety, clearance, and basically to improve the quality of life for all residents throughout the city. And uh, another key component, high priority, is economic development, right? To increase the employment levels, increase job training, technical assistance, workforce development, and economic empowerment of all low and moderate income residents in the city. So just to go back, um, sorry, to these are the high priorities that were identified in the five-year plan that helped inform the 2021 annual action plan and the second year plan. These are fairly broad and encompassing, all encompassing, but um, you know, it's because we, there are a lot of needs that exist and it provides the latitude to adjust funding based on the needs in any given year. Because at the beginning of the five years, what, who would have known that you know, five years ago before that there would be a coronavirus crisis. So um, these allow for some flexibility um, in terms of the federal guidelines. A key part of this process too is to understand the needs. Um, we do want to understand what are some of the needs that you see within the, your own neighborhood or community. This includes housing needs, economic development needs, public facility infrastructure needs, there can be roads, sidewalks, parks, uh, homeless needs, you know, should there be greater efforts at outreach, whatever it might be, and community development of public service needs. So we do as towards the end, there's a Facebook Live. You can post questions and we can, um, I can try to provide some answers. If I can't provide any immediate answers, I'll try to get, you know, definitely get back to you. Any questions and answers that are provided are part of the submission that's given to HUD as part of the, this, the 2021 annual action plan. We submit the document plus any public comments that we receive as part of a package to make sure that um, you know, there's public engagement and to show that there was a public input if, if we received any. Um, the annual action plan is currently on display and it is at this link. You can see uh, pittsburghpa.gov slash OMB slash community hyphen development within documents. And um, that's been on display now um, for about three weeks. And it'll be on display until May 10th, Monday, May 10th. So, you know, please, if you have the opportunity, please do um, check out the link and the entire document is on display 
and provide any feedback that you would like. And I also wanted to mention, I threw this in here that um, for the public service and NED funding cycle, there are actually applications that are available for fiscal year 2021 CDBG funding. And you can see that link at pittsburghpa.gov forward slash OMB grant and opportunities. So for anyone who's interested in uh, potentially qualifying for CDBG funding, you know, please take a look at that website. We have some great resources on there to learn more about those programs and guidelines. So to provide a timeline, just to give a sense of, of uh, what's coming up, where we are currently, the, as I mentioned, the annual action plan has been on display since April 9th through May 10th. Um, this is, of course, the second public hearing today. We had a public needs hearing that was conducted on March 24th. It was a virtual public needs hearing. So this is the second hearing or final public hearing. We anticipate submitting the annual action plan to HUD on May 14th. That's a week from this Friday. And then um, at that point, HUD has 45 days to review the document and to provide any comments or corrections that they want or give the final okay. And, and, um, and then we can move on with the fiscal year 2021 plan uh, funding. So I wanted to point this out too at the beginning. I mentioned that this the contract year is actually April 1st, 2020 through um, March 31st, 2020. Sorry, that should be April 1st, 2021 through um, March 31st, 2022. And that's because that's our fixed year uh, in terms of the HUD year for funding. And, um, but it all depends on when Congress allocates funds and when the city receives their all our allocations. And then that really determines when the process begins for submitting the annual action plan. So that drives that process. It's probably been about eight years since um, the plan was actually uh, ready to go on April 1st, just because of the delay and by Congress and um, in terms of getting the allocations out to communities. So that's what really drives that process. So as I mentioned at the beginning, um, we do welcome questions, comments, feedback. Uh, here's my email address. You're welcome to email me at whitney.finstrom at pittsburghpa.gov. Or we have another email address it's community.development at pittsburghpa.gov. So please do provide questions or comments. Uh, we welcome the opportunity for you to give us feedback. Um, do please look at the display copy that's on our, on our website. And um, with that, I want to thank you for your time. We appreciate your engagement today on a cold Sorry, Whitney, we are live on Facebook. Okay. And if okay. we have any questions, we can definitely take them. Okay. And I should mention too that this this presentation will be placed on our uh, Office of Management and Budget Community Development website for future viewing if people didn't have the opportunity to view this presentation. And it will also be, correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, on the Office of Community Affairs site um, as well. Yeah. And there's yes, an opportunity will, there to provide comments. Yes. And this is Eric Williams. I work in the Office of Community Affairs uh, and co-hosting with this meeting with Office of Management and Budget. And there is definitely opportunity for you to give feedback. If you don't mind jumping back to the, the last slide with the email address. Sure. We recently went live uh, through Facebook. Uh, we had some technical difficulties with connecting to Facebook, but the opportunity, if for those that are watching, can ask questions now, and Whitney can hand, ha answer those questions in live in real time. But you also can reach out to Whitney as well as the second email address listed on the slide. Other than that, it looks like we have no questions from the live, and we. <laughs> As Whitney said, this meeting is recorded and will be 
uh, shared on the city's YouTube channel as well as Office of Community Affairs social media pages and the Office of Management and Budgets website so you can review it and ask questions and voice your concerns there as well. Correct. Yeah, thanks, Eric. I appreciate it. So we have had people comment later on, you know, once it's posted, um, as was mentioned in Facebook, you know, there are comments that people can provide. So please do, please provide any feedback you'd like. Um, I will go back to this slide. Here's the display copy. It's available right at this link. And again, this will be posted on our website. Um, and the document itself is is on the on our website as well. So, you know, please do take a close look, provide us any feedback or input that you'd like. All right. So, and still no questions from the Facebook Live. So, I think we're good to end it here. Okay. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Again. Um, do provide feedback. Um, the document will be on display until this coming Monday, May 10th, and then it'll be submitted to HUD on May 14th. The other, sorry, the other brief thing I'd like to mention is that likely given the American Recovery uh, Program funding, ARP funding that, we will have future public hearings once additional funds come through that are from HUD, um, we know of one program, the home program, uh, we'll see a, what we call a substantial amendment. So when additional funds come in, we have to do what a, almost like a mini public hearing process. So it's almost as if we're creating a new plan. And so more than likely that will be coming up. It, it will be, we just don't know quite when yeah, we're just waiting for final HUD guidance in terms of the use of the funds and official federal notices. But um, I just want to put that out there that this will be revisiting the 2021 annual action plan more than likely a couple of times this coming year. So with that, thank you very much. Have a great afternoon.